Hello, welcome to another skill of the week. This time it's going to be for sixth grade prehistoric art. And I, please excuse my voice, I've been sick for a week and finally getting back into the thing. Okay, so remember that last time we worked on this, we crumpled up our paper, okay? And remember we have to gently crumple it because we don't want it all torn up. We just want it crumpled, okay? I'm gonna turn mine over because a couple of spots I had some tear marks and so I taped those shut. So now I'm going to be working on this side. So the materials that I'm going to be using are some different kinds of Conta crayons and uh, earth tone pastels. But first, we want to be remembering what we want to put on our prehistoric art. And we are wanting to use the characteristics of prehistoric art, which are twisted perspective, overlapping, tally marks, and handprints. And now remember, number five is that they're far from the entrance. And I'm going to show you an example of all of these. You're going to have a minimum of three animals, and you have to use appropriate colors. Because remember, they only used earth tones. They didn't use green and blue and purple and red and things like that, except for red ochre, which is more of a brownish red. Okay? Now what I want you to do before you get into the actual drawing on your on your uh, stone piece, which is our crumpled paper, is I want you to sketch out your ideas of animals that you'd like to do. Now remember, I'm trying to draw these in a way that with twisted perspective and overlapping, and then of course I can add my tally marks and my handprint later, but right now I am trying to figure out the animals that I want to do. So I've got a bull on there, and notice that the bull's horns are showing twisted perspective because they look like they're facing us and the bull is facing to the side. The horse is in twisted perspective because the horse is facing the side and we can see all four legs. And the reindeer, again, the antlers are in twisted perspective because they look like they're facing us, but the faces of the reindeer are facing profile. Now, on reindeer, the nice thing about reindeer is you don't have to do the entire body because remember the row of reindeer that we saw uh, in <clears throat> the Lascaux cave, we saw just a whole row of heads because they're very recognizable by their antlers. So keep that in mind if you're thinking you want to do those animals. Okay, so the first thing I need to do is make this look like stone because right now it just looks like a white piece of paper. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab these earth tone pastels, okay, and I do have... A little I want a little bit of brown and I think I want a little bit of gray okay so I've got some gray there and some brown so the first thing I'm going to use is my gray and I'm going to lightly go over now this this is not a soft pastel it's a Conta cray crayon so it's uh, not going to have be as effective but it might work I'm just lightly going over the whole thing, kind of emphasizing those wrinkle marks. Okay, and then I'm going to lightly go over with some of the brown, just really lightly. You just want to touch those upper areas of the wrinkles. So I'm just running it lightly over the top. See that? very lightly. And then I'm going to take my whole hand and I'm just going to smear it. Now that's not quite as dark as I'd like so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take soft black charcoal and I'm going to run it on my hands like this. Okay. And then I'm going to smear that on my paper. Now, it's not doing too much, so just lightly, I'm going to take that black really, really lightly. I don't want too much black because I want my animals to show up. So I'm just taking it on the edges. Just really lightly on the edges. And I'm going to smear that in. Okay, so now my stone looks a little more stony. 
Okay, it's not just a stark white piece of paper. And remember, we tore our edges here too. Okay, so now I'm going to start drawing my animals. I think I'm going to go ahead and do my bowl first. And I'm going to use a Conta crayon, which a Conta crayon, the reason you can tell the difference is that it's, let me see if I can get it up here. Okay, it's skinny and a soft charcoal is fat. See that? Okay. Soft charcoal is much softer, okay, if, you, if I rub it like this, I get it all over my fingers. If a, I rub a Conta crayon, I don't get it, okay? I don't get it all over my fingers like I do soft charcoals, okay? So I'm going to start with my bowl. And remember, we need to fill the space, so we're going to go ahead and draw pretty big, okay? I'm going to draw my bull's horns right here. If you make a mistake, that's okay. I made a mistake. I'm just going to redo it. And I can just blend that other part that I made a mistake on. I can blend that part in. Okay. I want his horns to be like that. Okay. And then I'm going to draw his face in side view. And I'm drawing him pretty big. And remember the bulls that we saw all had humps on their backs. And I'm not going to get his whole body in there, and that's okay, because remember there were some areas of that painting, of those paintings that we saw, that we didn't see the entire animal, okay? Because the bulls, they really, you could tell that they were bulls just because of the shape of them. And okay, I'm drawing his brisket, okay? And now I'm just, I'm going to let his legs just kind of go off the page, okay? And then I'm going to draw his belly right there and let his legs go off the page. So here I got my bowl kind of drawn out there really large. Okay, and now I can take a soft pastel and I can fill in his horns because remember those horns that we saw on most of those bulls were black. Not all of them, but most. Okay, and then I can just smooth that in. Smear, smear, smear. It's okay to smear pastels. Remember when I say when we shade, we don't smear the shading, but we can do that with pastel. Okay, so now I'm ready to add some color. So I'm going to take my brown soft pastel, my soft ones are the ones you want to color with, and I'm going to kind of blend that all in. Remember, when we do uh, overlapping, we, uh, we ignore the painting below. So this one, I'm, I'm the new artist, I'm drawing my image, I'm painting it with my pastels, which uh, would be like one of the ochre colors, okay? And then I can smooth it all in, blend, blend, blend. And if I don't feel like it's dark enough, I can always do more. But there's my bowl. And I think I might even add a little bit of red ochre. And my red ochre color is this color. Okay, it's kind of a reddish brown color. And I'm going to add that to that hump area. Just fill it in a little bit more. I'm going to smooth that in a little. Now, remember the... Uh, Conta crayon, this is the Conta crayon, so it's not as smooth. Um, it's going to take a little bit more blending, but you can see that it's getting some color in there. Okay, I might even add a little bit of black to his muzzle. Okay, so it's looking more like a bull, isn't it? And then maybe even a little bit to his chest and legs. Blend that in, okay? Then I can draw my horse. And I'm going to go ahead and draw it with the black Conta crayon. And now is when I start my overlapping. So I've got my bull taking up all of the space. But now I'm the, I'm the artist and I am going to ignore what was below and overlap with a new painting. So I'm going to start my horse here. And I'm just going to draw it right over the top. 
of the one that I have. Now we have that swooping back that we saw, you know, with like the Chinese horse. We're gonna have a swooping belly. And I'm gonna go ahead and let his leg just come off the page. Okay, and remember I need to be able to see all four legs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and give him a tail and a stand-up mane. Give him an eye and a nose and then I can start adding my color in. Okay, so see how he's overlapping the bowl now? Now I think I want to make him kind of like the Chinese horse. So I'm going to use my yellow ochre. This is a Conte crayon because remember the soft pastel is fat, Conte crayon is not. And I'm going to color him in. And on that Chinese horse, he had a white a whitish belly, so I'm going to leave the belly alone. And then I'm going to smooth that all in. And I colored that kind of hard because I wanted to really make sure that that color stood out for my, my yellow horse. And then I'm going to take my black pastel and I'm going to color the legs black because remember in our uh, horses we saw they had black legs okay and he had kind of a black muzzle too so I'm going to smooth that in and there I have my horse done okay now I need to do my reindeer so let me think here I think I'm going to go ahead and draw them with my black again and I, I'm going to kind of turn my paper. I, I need to make sure that I have enough space for my handprint. I think I'm going to put that up here. So I think I'm going to turn my paper and have my, my reindeer just running right across there. So I'm going to have them pointing this direction. And remember, though, we saw those antlers were really, really big, weren't they? Because remember, like the giant deer, they could have antlers that were six feet across. So we could have really, really big antlers. Okay, I'll have straight necks, little eye, little nose, and then I'll do another one right here. Kind of the same shape, ears that are shaped kind of like almonds, and then those big, big antlers. Okay, so now I have my, my reindeer drawn on there, and I can go ahead and add a different color to that. I think I'm going to use gray, because my reindeer should be kind of grayish, and I think this is actually kind of a brown color, but that's okay. Yeah, I'll make my reindeer kind of brown. That's really a dark brown. So check your colors if you're really intent on keeping them particular color. So there are my dark brown reindeer, and they don't have to be totally colored in, but they do have to show up. Okay, so now I'm going to do my hand print. So I can use my scrap paper, and I'm going to take a pencil, and I'm going to trace my hand. And remember, you want your hand spread out. Okay, so now I have my hand on my scratch paper there. And I'm going to cut it out. Because this is the easiest way to make sure that our handprint is done the way they would have done it. They would have crushed up their pigment or their color and mixed it with water and sprayed it through a bird to a bird bone or a 
or a, um, a reed of some sort and sprayed it on and it would have been a negative handprint. Well, it's hard to do that when you've got your own hand on there and you're blowing on a pipe. That's really difficult. So we're going to do it the easy way. And we're going to use red ochre, okay? And we're going to hold our hand down on our handprint and we're going to color from the inside out. So it looks like it's being sprayed out away from the fingers. And I'm over I'm overlapping my uh, bull, but that's okay. As long as I make my handprint dark enough and it shows up, it'll work. And there is my negative handprint in red ochre. So see how I did that? I went from the inside out, away from the center. And that way, you're going to get that spray effect. Okay? And then we need to make some tally marks. We can make uh, just a few, or we can make a lot, but don't make them all over the place. Just make, just make some. So maybe I'm just going to make some tally marks. Oops paper tore right there. So I'm going to tape that, but I'm going to make a few tally marks above the bull's head. And remember, our tally marks on our uh, prehistoric art are not like tally marks of the modern era, where you go one, two, three, four, slash across. It just might be a whole row of either slashes or circles, or something like that. So there is your prehistoric artwork. And then Sign it on the back. Okay? And then we're done. Thank you.